Well, good morning once again. Welcome to my shop. I wanted to share with you something I've been working on the past couple of weeks. I'm preparing for an art exhibit in Thermopolis, Wyoming in the middle of February. A couple of the items I've been working on are wall hangings. And they look like a big platter. Okay, designed to go on the wall or maybe on a display stand. This is one that's nearly finished. The back's pretty plain, got a little bit of decoration in there. And I've got a bit of uh, decorations here that I'm going to cover with some gilt cream, and I'll show you that. I'm going to readjust my camera and show you one that I've been working on that's in an earlier stage. Now, I was working on this platter yesterday, and I thought this might be a good video to do to show you my process of decorating the main face of this platter wall hanging. Let me show you the back of this. And that's pretty well completed. Later on when I get the front of that completed I'll reverse check this and I'll take this little lip away and it'll look more natural. And that's running fairly true now. I've done a little bit on this platter. Now this wood is soft maple. It's got a little bit of figure in it and I have to consider what I'm going to do with this entire face of this wall hanging. I've got this cleaned up. It's been sanded to probably 600 grit. I can do a little bit of texturing on it. I can leave it like it is. I can color it. What I want to do in the very center of this is I want to put a dome and maybe do some gold leafing. So, so I think the next step is to take a little bit more of this wood off and I'm kind of thinking about putting a bead right in here. Now mainly what I'm doing right now is I'm leveling off the surface of my wall hanging. I've got a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and I'm doing a draw cut and leveling off the surface from the center to the rim. And I'll put a little bit of detail in there that uh, later on I'll carve or color. The very center I want to do a little bit of gold leaf. In the next segment I'll explain a little bit more about why I'm not doing a push cut or why it's okay to do a push cut on a flat surface. Now as I make a push cut from the outside to the inside of this piece of wood I'm really going directly into end grain here. So the decision you have to make is do I do a push cut into end grain, or do I do a scrape from the center back towards myself? And I think really this is probably a better option is to do a draw cut, which is a little bit more of a scrape. So I'll try to open up my flute a little bit more into a cutting uh, position as I do this. And I have a lot of bulk to take away right there. Well, as I shape and contour the front of my wall hanging, I have something in mind. Here I'm working on my dome, and I'm just continuing to scrape that. And now I'm working on a large, flat area. It's got a bit of a concave shape to it. Now, you also may notice that I'm changing tools. Sometimes it's a matter of removing a lot of wood and sometimes it's just making a little detail. Now for the most part I've got most of my piece all contoured. I'm working on a little detail right there that's going to lead into a bead in the next segment. And that's another concave feature. I'll do something with. Now right now I've got my Dave Schweitzer D-Way Tools beading tool, which is a really nice little tool. and You can't see the tool very well because of the shavings, but you can see the bead emerging and it just cuts a beautiful bead. Now I have a small parting tool and I'm just working on either side of that bead. I just want that bead to blend into the surface surrounding it. And it's really going to be a raised bead I'm just cutting down the wood on the left and the right side of the bead. Now what I have here is some end grain here and here that's given me a little bit of a problem. 
I've got some torn grain here. So what I've done is I've taken some mineral oil and I've saturated the two places where there is end grain. And this will help stabilize that wood and hopefully cut a little bit cleaner. Now what I'm using is a small bowl gouge with a new grind on it. And I'm turning right at 800 RPM. Well, you certainly can't feel that, but that is really nice. That really helped a lot. So I'm going to just kind of finish that profile up and I'll work my way into the center of this piece. And I got some more torn grain right here, which really is uh, indicative of this soft maple. That's uh, what you're going to deal with. But anyway, okay, now what I've done is I've put a burr on this small skew chisel and I've just gone over this profile here and here and I've really cleaned that up quite a bit. Uh, I didn't have any torn grain because of the last cut I made with my little bowl gouge, so I just took a very light pass on that. So now I'm ready to go to the next step. Now I've selected a little area just to the right of my bead. I've got my texturing tool and I'm trying to be very careful here. This wood is really very soft and it's not very amenable to taking a good texture but I do pretty good here. I'll show you a close-up. Now I'm continuing to give my platter the once-over and I'm making some final finishing cuts working my way back into the center where I'm going to have a dome and I'm starting to think about what I'm going to do with this platter. I want to do a little bit of gold leaf on the very center, but I'm not sure. So this is a good shot of a back cut with my 3 8 bowl gouge. In a second, I'm going to go to another tool where I'm going to try to make a little cleaner cut. This is my 65 degree bowl gouge. And as you can see from the shavings, it's doing a pretty good job cutting this. I'll just shut up and let you watch. Now I've done pretty much all the turning on this from the rim to the bead. I've got a little bit of a Robert Sorby spiral texturing right there. I've done a little bit of sanding on this. This is all completed except the very center where I'm going to put that dome and I still need to do a little bit of turning on that. It's too too tall. The light has been giving me fits on this very light colored maple. So I'm going to just uh, spritz this with some water and try to highlight the features in this wood. So what I'm aiming for is a canvas. Do I color? Do I texture? One thing I want to do in this piece is I want to do a little bit of carving. When you're doing a wood turning project, everything comes out symmetrical. Alright, I mean everything is exactly in the same all the way around this because you're you're cutting a circle no matter what you're doing. So I want to go a little bit against that design that's natural with wood turning and do some carving. I think I can do some carving here. Maybe I'll leave this, do a little bit of carving with my Proxon carver. So next step is to finish up the very center of this. Now I'm going to take a second and show you a tool. This is a Dave Schweitzer D-Way tool for hollowing. Why am I showing you this? Well, this tool is used when the lathe is going in reverse. Okay, There is precedent for turning in reverse, and I do it occasionally. I'm not sure if I've ever shown it on a video. In the next segment, I'm going to turn in reverse, partly because I'm standing in the way of the camera. 
Well, you'll see it. Now, just because I'm showing you this does not mean that you need to do this. This is something I do occasionally when I'm turning and I'm in an awkward position and I need to just turn so I'm comfortable. I always say that you become a wood turner when you make your own decisions about what you turn as well as safety. You may not feel this is safe. I do. I've never had a problem with my chuck unthreading. Now this may seem a little bit strange to you, even counterintuitive, but there is precedent for turning in reverse. As I mentioned, the Dave Schweitzer tool, number one, and number two, J. Paul Fennell, also hollows in reverse, and you can check him out. This is just a very nice, comfortable position for me. Here I'm using a back cut, and I'm pushing away from myself. Now I'm cranking up the speed a little bit because that center is not turning as fast as the outside circumference is. So that's a good shot. Getting some pretty nice shavings. I am dealing with some end grain in here that uh, is kind of challenging for me. At the very end I'm going to do a little scraping to take care of that ridge right there. Now here's a good shot of my nearly completed canvas and I've gone to an even larger bowl gouge in hopes to get a better surface and that's another shot of a back cut. So we'll just look at the surface and that's pretty good really. I need to do some sanding on that. Well I'm very happy so far with my wall hanging and I can see there's some features in that grain that I need to highlight. I can also see that this is going to be a two-part video series. I think this will be the end of part one and then the next part will continue with the coloring and the texturing and whatever else I'm going to do to this wall hanging. Stay tuned for part two.